Dennis Corper here, bringing you another Bible blessing. Tonight, I would like to look at the subject of Bible prophecy. Let's begin by asking a simple question. Why is the subject of Bible prophecy important? Well, there are a few reasons. First of all, it reveals a sovereign God. People today are distressed by the events and the circumstances that they find themselves subjected to. And people wonder, has God lost control? Is this world spinning out of control? Will justice ever be brought to bear on the injustices that cause us such grief in this world? Has God abandoned us? Well, as we study Bible prophecy, we learn that God is in complete control. We learn the timeline of history, of biblical history, and realize that there are certain events that will take place, events that show that God is sovereign and that he is ruling and reigning, although men often don't perceive it. Ultimately, he will bring justice and righteousness to bear on this evil world. The subject of prophecy also gives hope. We learn in the subject of Bible prophecy that God is faithful. We see that he keeps the promises that he made so long ago to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. We see that the words of Christ and the writings of the apostles are fulfilled in the church, and the church has its destiny in Bible prophecy specified. And so we have hope and comfort in the study of Bible prophecy. So let's look at this subject, and I have before me here a timeline of Bible prophecies showing the major events that have taken place in the past and that we should look forward to in the future. And I found this little chart on a website, uh, wordtruthpress.com, and I'll share the link below the video so that you can go to the timeline yourself and review this subject matter. Now I wanna begin with the first event when we think about Bible prophecy. The first event that I want you to take notice of was the fall of Israel and that's recorded in 2 Kings 17, verse 6. Why is the fall of Israel important? Because up until this time, from the time of Abraham until the fall of Israel, Israel had been a nation with a defined land, with kings ruling over her, and with God directing her and establishing her. But because of idolatry and because of sin, and because of disregard to the law of God and to the written word of God, Israel fell and her fall was predicted by the prophets. And after this fall, she was dispersed into all parts of the world. And so from this point onward, from the fall of Israel until the beginning of the great tribulation, which is yet future, we have what we call the time of the Gentiles. When Israel is no longer a constituted nation, she's dispersed and under judgment, and God is now dealing with the Gentile nations. And after the diaspora and judgment of Israel and the fall of Israel came the birth and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And of course, that's recorded in the four gospels, the story of the life of Jesus Christ, how he came into the world, how he lived a sinless life. He performed many wonders and miracles. His teachings were acknowledged by all. He died on the cross as the Lamb of God to atone for the sins of all the world, as Isaiah and the other prophets predicted. And he rose again from the dead as the evangelists bore witness to. And in Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 11, Christ ascended into heaven. And do you remember what Jesus promised his disciples? 
when he told them that he would depart from this world? Well, he told them to tarry at Jerusalem and that they would receive the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit, according to the promise of Christ, was poured out upon the church. And that established the church age. And the Apostle Paul described this church age that we're presently in as a great mystery. And what did the Apostle Paul mean by that? Well, he meant that it was unknown. It was unpredicted by the prophets. It was unpredicted in the Old Testament. But it was now made known through the apostles. Now, I want to read the verse that backs that assertion up. And it's found in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 2 to 6. So let's read it together. Assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. As I have written briefly, when you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has been revealed to the holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the same promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Now, I want you to notice in that brief passage, the word mystery is given three times. And the mystery is that the Gentiles would be brought in to a body being one body with Jews and Gentiles in Christ, establishing this age that we're presently in, the church age. So God is working presently through the church, universally and locally, to gather his elect through the preaching of the cross, through the preaching of the gospel. And at the end of this dispensation, this church age, there will be what we call, there will be what we call the rapture, the rapture of the church. The church will be taken out of the world. And then God's program and the fulfillment of his promises to Israel will be taken up anew. And I want to read the passage that teaches us about this doctrine of the rapture. It's found in 2 Thessalonians, verses 16 to 18. And it says there, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven, with a cry of command and with the voice of an archangel and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and are left will be caught up. And that's where the term rapture comes. The term that's in the Bible here saying caught up means rapture. We'll be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so will we always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So the next major event on God's prophetic timetable is the rapture of the church. Now, some people confuse the rapture with the second coming of Christ. But if we look carefully at the scriptures that speak about the second coming of Christ, at the second coming, Christ comes to the earth. He sets foot on the Mount of Olives. And the Bible tells us that every eye shall see him. And even they that pierced him shall wail because of him. He comes with clouds and every eye shall see him. And there are certain events that will take place before the second coming of Christ. By contrast, the rapture, Jesus does not set foot on the earth. As we just read, he comes in the air and will be caught up in the, in the moment and in the twinkling of an eye, will be caught up and we will meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So we're not to confuse the second coming with the rapture. There are two distinct events and a careful study of scripture will bear that out. I covered this subject in another video. So if you'd like to go to my YouTube channel, uh, Daily Bible Blessings or Bible Blessings Ministries, 
you'll see the video that I put out on this subject. So the rapture is the next major event on God's prophetic timetable. Then we come to the tribulation period. And this is a time of great trouble, Jacob's trouble. And there will be tribulation and judgment and plagues such as the world has never known. They'll be catastrophic in magnitude and the world will be under what we call the wrath of God. This period will last for seven years. After this seven year tribulation period, Christ will return in bodily form with his saints. And upon the return of Christ, he will set up his millennial kingdom. Well, what is the millennial kingdom? Millennial means a thousand. There will be a thousand year reign of Christ. During this reign of Christ, the devil will be bound. Much to our sorrow, he's on the loose today, causing much grief and pain throughout the world. And the New Testament describes the devil in this age as the God of this world. But when Christ returns during the millennial reign that the prophets predicted, Israel will be reestablished and Christ will reign from Jerusalem and Satan will be bound. And these years will be years of peace and prosperity. And the Bible predicts that people will live longer than ever before. Length of days will be granted and God will show his goodness and his glory. Now, after that thousand year reign of Christ, Satan will be loosed again and we'll have what we call the battle of Armageddon. But of course, the end of time will come. There will be the great white throne judgment spoken of in Revelation 20, 11 to 15, where those who have rejected Christ will be cast into the lake of fire. And after that, we'll come into the eternal state, the eternal kingdom, where Christ will rule and reign with his saints forever and ever. So if you want to look at this chart for yourself, I'll post it, the link beneath the video, and I hope you'll took, take a close look at it and look at the biblical reference, references. And you'll find there that it's a great comfort to those who believe and trust in the promises of God to see that he's sovereign, to see that he's Lord of Lords and King of Kings, to see that history is completely under his control. And those who trust in him will be blessed and rewarded at the rapture, in the millennial kingdom, and in the eternal kingdom. So I hope you'll look at this chart and that it will be to you a Bible blessing. This is Dennis Corkery. Thank you for joining me.